Hi everyone! In today's video, we're going to be learning about Lindera benzoin L. bloom, otherwise known as Benjamin bush, wild allspice, and the northern spice bush. Now, in today's video, we're just going to be referring to it as spice bush. Spice bush is a multi stem deciduous shrub that grows to be about one to five meters tall. This species is most commonly known for being extremely fragrant. If its leaves, twigs, or fruits are crushed up, they release a distinct smell. Spice bush has also been known to be used in a variety of different things, such as teas, natural insect repellents, and it's also been known to be used as an allspice substitute. Now, if we take a look at a distribution map of spice bush in North America, we'll see that it is native to the eastern United States and a little bit of Canada. Spice bush is becoming a very popular ornamental species and a lot of people are adding it to their landscape, especially for restorations. If you're wanting to do the same, keep in mind that spice bush grows in hardiness zones 4 through 9. As far as spice bush's natural environment goes, it prefers rich, moist areas. Some places you could find one would be a forest, near streams, or on the edge of a swamp or pond. Spice bush is an understory species, so it can thrive in the shade but it can also do pretty well in the sun. Lastly, an interesting tidbit about spice bush and its environment is that early settlers would use spice bush as an indicator for good agricultural land because spice bush prefers rich soils. Spice bush can be identified pretty easily in different ways, but let's start out with its bark, which to me is quite distinctive. The bark of spice bush is a smooth light gray to brown with extremely prominent lenticels. As the shrub gets older, the bark can get a little flaky, but generally it will look like this. Now let's turn our attention to the twig, which is thin and brown to green in color. Also, the lateral buds on this twig are arranged in an alternating pattern and will have bud scales that are arranged in an imbricate pattern so they overlap like shingles on a roof. It may be difficult to distinguish the lateral buds from the flower buds, but once the shrub gets ready to flower, the flower buds will swell up and will be ball shaped. The actual lateral bud is tucked in between the flower buds. As for our terminal bud, we don't have one. The bud that is sitting at the top of our twig is another lateral bud and is known as a false terminal bud. Remember, a quick way to identify a spice bush twig would be to scratch or break it and see if it smells spicy like a mix of allspice and other false spices. Now the leaves of spice bush are green, simple, entire, oval shaped, and the bottom of the leaf is paler than the top. Typically, you'll find two different sized leaves on each twig with smaller leaves occurring at the base of the larger leaves. In about mid-autumn, the leaves will start to turn yellow, which is a huge draw for this species ornamental use. The leaves release a similar scent to the twigs when crushed. Alright, spice bush blooms March to May and will do so before it even has leaves. Spice bush is an excellent example of a dioecious species because it typically has male and female flowers on separate individuals. Generally, the flowers of spice bush are yellow, form in clusters along the stem, and have six tepals. The males, or the staminate pollen producing flowers, have nine fertile stamen whereas the female or pistillate flowers have a pistil that contains a fertile ovary and 12 to 18 infertile stamen. Spice bush is attractive to many organisms such as birds, butterflies, bees, and moths. Some moths and butterflies even use the spice bush as a host for their eggs. After pollination takes place in around August to November, a shiny red fruit called a drupal form. This droop contains a single seed the seed will be dark brown speckled with light brown coloration. Also, when crushed, the droop has a distinctive smell that differs from that of the twig and the leaves. It's still spicy, but it also has a hint of orange to it. Now, the seeds of spice bush are dispersed by many animals and birds that eat the fruits, such as deer, possums, and songbirds. When they're dispersed, the seeds can remain dormant in the seed bank for many years. Lastly, even though reproduction can happen through seed, most spice bush reproduction probably happens asexually through the root systems. So if you see a thicket of spice bush, they're probably clones of each other. Alrighty, thank you all for watching. I hope that you enjoyed learning about spice bush, otherwise known as Lindera benzoin with me. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe, and I hope to see you all in my next video.